Well, welcome to the big board. Tough day today, so we're gonna uh, talk a bit about You're the Rat. It's very briefly, I hope. Um, I don't have a lot to say because I didn't play very much of the game, and that's primarily because of the hidden uh, counter motif that runs through this title. It uh, really is gonna be best played opposed. And so my comments are, are in that context as a solo game, as a solo effort. I, I, I didn't find a lot of enjoyment here because I was either constantly flipping counters over or I was leaving everything exposed, which took away obviously from the, uh, the, the one of the core values uh, of the game, which is we don't know where the Vietnamese will strike. We don't know where the uh, the, the big punch will come from. We don't know where the dummy counters are and things like that. So, so it's almost it's almost worth me saying that uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I would hazard to say that to, just to keep this brief, that this game is of fantastic nostalgic value if you were a war gamer in 1972, or if you served in Vietnam or if you're a fan of uh, the strategy and tactics magazines and their games, you should absolutely get a copy of this. In fact, you can probably buy this one at some point. Um, it's a game designed in 1972 about uh, a conflict in 1972, and that's a very rare thing that occurs. So I think there's value to it, to the title and to the effort from that. But I don't know that there's a lot more to this game. There's some nice mechanics that capture, oh, the feel and the flavor of of the situation, uh, you know, areas, regional areas with villages that all have intrinsic defensive values that need to be captured and then recaptured. And, you know, the Arvin can uh, go in certain areas and the... Uh, uh, you know, the South Vietnamese have their challenges and the Yanks can, you know, chop a fly everywhere and all that sort of fun stuff. A lot of the game of the for the handful of uh, turns I played devolved into where can I just pile on as much air as possible and either disrupt an enemy unit or eliminate it entirely. Um, and that, uh, you know, certainly happened. 72 was a tough year in this war. And there was a you know a number of offensives and counteroffensives, and it got ugly. There are some very strong divisions, uh, uh, Vietnamese, uh, North Vietnamese divisions, that really can pile the hurt on to the U.S. forces. And uh, if it, U.S. forces attack them without knowing what's in in the hex, uh, you can end up with a one-to-one -one attack, and you have a one-to-six chance of taken an attack attacker eliminated which <laughs> you know you can't afford to do that uh you can't afford to have those massive losses and same for the the you know the Viet Minh they they can't afford to take massive losses either really so it's a, it's a lot of cat, cat and mousing going on with this game which then really starts to uh, drive the game back into this you know, ultimately a two-player mode, and you really need that two-player mode. So intelligence is important in this game. The role you play is at the higher level uh, army uh, construct, theater construct. Uh, your objectives are strictly driven around capturing VP locations, you know, all these spots that have uh, uh, these numbers here, these regions, controlling these regions and, and these uh, different... Uh, uh, villages, as the case may be, logistics is kind of abstracted. Uh, the North Vietnamese and the Viet Minh have a uh, set of supply counters that they use, which some of which are dummies as well. And so you got to be able to track back to those, and you use those uh, when you when you go into combat. I think it. I think it does generally pull out some nice narrative. There is some sense of uncertainty as the U.S. player. And uh, you certainly feel kind of crafty, I imagine, as the, uh, the North Vietnamese player. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it all will work out because I didn't finish the game. I, I wrapped it up ten four or five, and, and really kind of felt like I, I was 
I was kind of just going through the motions with the game as opposed to being drawn into and engrossed with the title. So, um, the components are typical 70s style stuff from uh, s and SBI. It's, you know, nothing to write home about. You can see the map colors here. They're all fairly generic and Spartan, which is okay. The colors of uh, the counters, uh, you know, they kind of pop. Where, where are the counters? <clears throat> I don't know. Well, there you go. Uh, the, the, the colors of the counters do pop on the map, so they do look quite nice. Interesting. I must have put them down somewhere when I bagged them up. So, hopefully when I sell it, you'll actually get the counters with it as well. So, uh, you know, it, aesthetically, it's it's fine. Uh, lots of text on the map here with the uh, combat results. You know, let's put another half a page of rules in, in here and and uh, and knock that out so we don't have to have all this stuff on the map. Uh, having the game track on the map is fine and the reinforcements is fine. And I've only got three quarters of the map shown. Here's the other, other section of it there. Um, there's victory point tracks and things like that. So, you know, all in all, I'm sure it's a fine game. I I, I don't, uh, like I said, I haven't played it enough to give you a definitive, yes, this is awesome. But if you're a nostalgia guy and you're interested in uh, Vietnam and you want to goof around with this and play opposed, then I think it's certainly something worth considering uh, to be in your collection or on your gameplay list. So that's a quick little look at uh, Year of the Rat from ST Magazine number 35. So if you can find it, pick it up. Look forward to talking to you soon. Ciao.